The University of South Carolina student Samantha Josephson, age 21, did what many other young people do frequently, she phoned an Uber. She thought it was her Uber when a black Chevy Impala pulled up, so she quickly hopped in the back seat. This is the last time anyone would ever see Samantha Josephson alive again. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more stories. Samantha, a native of New Jersey, worked as a server at a nearby restaurant while she went to college. When she graduated, she intended to go law school. On Friday, March 29, 2019, around 2 a.m., Samantha had been out having fun with her pals in Colombia. She made the choice to phone for an Uber ride back to her dorm room after she lost sight of her friends at some point during the evening. Hunters discovered her dead in a Clarendon County field outside of Columbia 14 hours later. The owner of the black Chevy Impala shown on security camera video that evening is 24-year-old Nathaniel Rowland. The Impala pulls up next to Samantha, who is plainly seen waiting on the street for her Uber ride. She shuts the door after slipping into the rear seat of the car. Her roommates made the decision to contact the police and file a missing person report after she failed to return home by Friday morning. By 4 o'clock that afternoon, her body had been located. Authorities started looking for the mysterious car. Police stopped an Impala on Saturday that matched the description of the car in the video. What's going on, sir? You got your license? With... You got your license on you? I'm also crying at Columbia Police Warrant K9. No, no, I'll license on you. Why not? Alright, Who's smoking the marijuana? I had smoked some earlier, sir, when I was at home. Alright. Alright, man, you're gonna have to step on out, man. Go ahead, sir. Alright, here's the deal, man. I pulled your car over because it matches the suspect. Get your hand in your pocket. What are you, crazy? Get over here. Hey, get over here. Go on, run. Hey, I want to release the dog. I can't. I was just going to see if he'll stop. Bravo, Mike, wearing a gray sweatpants, gray sweatshirt. The motorist refused to obey and began to flee, but police caught him before he could escape. Authorities looked for any evidence that proved Samantha had been present in the suspect's vehicle. There was blood on the passenger side and trunk, and her mobile phone was hidden in the glove box. Test results showed that Samantha's blood was a match for the blood present in the vehicle. Investigators also noticed that the child safety locks were turned on in the vehicle, so Samantha couldn't escape, even if she realized she was in the wrong vehicle. Roland was detained and charged with murder and kidnapping. An unidentified female passenger was in the car with him at the time of his arrest. She assisted authorities with their investigation. The trial for Roland began on July 19, 2021. He is charged with pretending to be an Uber driver to abduct Josephson. She was discovered not more than a few miles from Roland's house. Samantha suffered almost 30 stab wounds over the length of her torso, an autopsy found. Her face, body, legs, and feet were all injured. Additionally, her hair was discovered in Roland's car. Just hours after she passed away, security cameras recorded him using her debit card. At that time, he also made an effort to sell her cell phone. The murder weapon was left at a house he had gone to that same night, and the victim's blood was on his clothes. Samantha's footprint was discovered on the window of Roland's car. This indicated that when the door locks were engaged to lock her inside, she may have attempted to escape by kicking the glass of his vehicle, leaving her footprint there. Samantha was brutally killed, making it impossible for her parents to recognize their daughter. Only a DNA match could ensure that the body was that of Samantha's. Cell phone data showing Roland's and Samantha's phones pinging in the same areas, including the isolated region where her body was discovered the next day. This is one of the most incriminating pieces of evidence connecting Roland to the murder of Samantha. Roland was arrested and held in Richland County. He entered a not guilty plea. Roland's family and friends believe he did not murder Samantha. Roland's ex-girlfriend testified during the trial that she had observed blood in the rear of his car. She also remembered witnessing him use bleach to clean the automobile and then a knife. The jury looked over all of the evidence and reached a verdict in the case.
Uh, Madam Four Lady, if you'll stand for me, please. Uh, have you reached a verdict? Yes, sir, it has. Is it unanimous? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, if you will pass it up, please, and you may be seated. The defendant will rise. Madam Clerk, you may publish the verdicts. And I certainly understand the family being in total disbelief that the child that they raised could do such a heinous thing, could commit such a murder. And um, I have dealt with the heartless. And you fall into that category. A person without any remorse whatsoever. A person who is totally emotionless, and in the law we call it a depraved heart. And it would be absolutely ast astonishing, amazing to me to, for the truth to be that you have engaged in this activity all of a sudden that there are not signs that your family can point to, that your friends can point to, where if some intervention had taken place, this young lady would have been protected. I don't know that. But as much as your mom feels in the bottom of her soul or pit of her stomach about you, I feel that same thing based on my experience and based on my observing you and witnessing the evidence in this case. So I want to thank the jury for your um, focus on this case. I noticed that you all were totally engaged and tuned. Thank you very much uh, on behalf of the citizens of Richland County and the citizens of the state of South Carolina. And South Carolina is a wonderful state a lovely place and people from all over the country, particularly the Northeast, 
choose South Carolina because of its beauty and charm and people and Columbia for all of the same reasons. Because we're, we live in such a wonderful state, such a diverse state where there are opportunities for everyone and certainly opportunities for you and for you to have attended South Carolina State University. If your parents have given you as much as they gave you, and for you then, your life story to end right here at this point in time. Of course, your life story doesn't end, but this is a, certainly a stop along the way. It, it, it's a tragedy. And whatever tragedy that caused or cause or causes these demons to reside within your soul and spirit I don't know maybe at one point in time since this is not a death penalty case they can be exercised exercised out of you Mr. Um, Goldberg made his closing argument and, and talked about, in the end, the consequences that would have had to exist in order for this not to be you. That someone would have had to steal your car, steal your car keys, kidnap Samantha, kill her with your tool, then bury her in your home territory, then miraculously get the car back to you in time for you to go to the ATM in Sumter and, and here in Columbia then turn over your car back to you with all the blood throughout it, all of Samantha's blood except for several teaspoons. And the story goes on and on. The evidence is so substantial in this case pointing to your guilt. And I emphasize that and reemphasize it because of the horrific and most brutal nature of this crime. It could not be worse. It's the most severe murder that has occurred that I have been a witness to as far as presiding in court or participating in as a lawyer. And for whomever asked me for leniency, and that's not part of my DNA. You know, I have two daughters, one of whom sit in this seat more often than I do, and another of whom live in a city who have to encounter people on a daily basis. And I have sons. I would like to think I know my sons and my daughters very well. Certainly. I would be in disbelief if any of them were to find themselves standing in a spot like you. But even more so, the terror imposed on that, their child and the pain and grief that you have caused. She was an amazing person, an amazing human being. And the testimony is here. And she obviously put up an amazing fight against you and left a sufficient trail for the jury to see what you did.
facts, and you're not an, an, an unintelligent person. Uh, you, you, you have a, you, you've been educated, trained, and you have a degree of intelligence. You certainly have the ability to choose a different course, um, but there's no perfect crime these days with forensic evidence, your whole 24 hours was recreated almost minute by minute, mile by mile, digit by digit that's led you here and you've now been found guilty. And sentencing in this case is not difficult. The sentence in this case is easy, though painful it may be. The sentence of the court for murder is that you be committed to the State Department of Corrections for life. Any other sentence that can be imposed will be concurrent with life since you only have one life, that sentence must be served for the remaining days of your natural life. That's the sentence of the court. If you remove Mr. from the courtroom, Mr. Rowley. In order to stop another tragic situation like Samantha's from happening again, Congress approved Sammy's law on July 29, 2020. A system that electronically matches customers with their appropriate drivers before they enter a car is something that ride-hailing services like Uber and Lyft are required by law to provide. Samantha Josephson's life should not have been taken from her. She had planned to go to the Drexel University Thomas R. Klein School of Law in Philadelphia upon her graduation, but sadly she never got the chance. My condolences to her friends and family. May you find some way to heal from this horrible tragedy. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.